Hi, I'm Alec Delancey. I'm a psychologist working in the field of mental health and education. And today I'd like to comment on a particular research paper entitled The Effect of Multiple Adverse Childhood Experiences on Health, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. Now, keep in mind the statements made here are based on my views or opinions, as well as research I will have done for this video. I will put the links in the description based on my research. The content presented here should never be used as a substitute for direct medical and or psychological advice from your doctor or other qualified clinicians. This video is based on my personal desire to bring to consumers the science behind mental health and related behaviors. So I found that this particular research was quite interesting and therefore I wanted to, to make a comment on it. While it's true that a number of the health related issues that humans may experience may have genetic components, a number of it might actually be due to stress. Now, I found this interesting because there are arguments such as, well, it's not based on stress or societal pressure, but uh, ailments or how people act, how people behave, it's based on genetics. Well, maybe it's a bit of both, and probably it is uh, um, both. Why I'm saying this? Because there are a number of research findings that look at the physiological and the biomolecular uh, structures and uh, they look at how children when exposed to chronic stress how this can actually lead to changes in their development uh, especially when it relates to development in their nervous system their endocrine system even how it affects their immune system and uh, what we know from research is that when these systems are affected, you can experience levels of impairments in your cognition. That's your ability to reason and think and plan and strategize. You can also have challenges when it comes to socialization. You can also have issues when it comes to emotional functioning or emotional regulation. So this research, the effects of uh, multiple adverse childhood experiences on health, I think was a was a really good good research. Now, adverse childhood experience, just to get a little idea of what that is, we can look at what the CDC or the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says with regards to what can be constituted as adverse childhood experience. So, well, childhood, we can say it's between the age of zero to 17. So it includes adolescence as well. So what the CDC is saying is that if a child or, or an adolescent is exposed to violence, abuse, neglect, if they witness violence in the home, they witness violence in the community, or possibly a family member may have committed suicide, or probably they attempted suicide, that could be constituted as an adverse childhood experience, or, or those events can be constituted as adverse childhood experiences. Also, too, you may have a family member who may be involved in drug use or drug abuse, or you may have a family member or someone in the home who has a mental health issue that is causing some real challenges and it's causing high levels of stress in the home. So that can actually be constituted as an adverse um, childhood experience that the child may be going through because of having this person who has um, the various challenges. Also to the CDC says that if a parent, for example, is separating or a divorce is going on, the child being in that environment, that can be an adverse 
environment. So it is an adverse childhood experience. Also, you may have a, a family member who is incarcerated or who was arrested. They, they go to jail. So that environment now becomes an adverse um, childhood experience because that other person is not there. Maybe it's a person who was the provider in the home at one time, as the case may be. So this level of chronic stress that is applied on the child can be considered as an adverse childhood experience. What's interesting is that this particular research, it was a large research, and I love meta-research because it looks at bodies of other research and it is able to tease out research that it was rigorous. So the researchers paid close attention to the principles of research and the researcher who is doing the meta research can actually use these research papers. And those that maybe there was some lacks, it probably doesn't stand to scrutiny. Maybe it wasn't a large research um, number of participants, those could be excluded. Of course, we're not saying that in all situations, you need a large number of people in order for the data to have some kind of relevance. But of course, the more data you can have, the more participants you can have, it's the better for, for certain types of research. So regardless of where you are in the Caribbean or in the world, so for example, if you're in Trinidad and Tobago, if you're in Grenada, uh, St. Vincent, you're in Jamaica, wherever you are, uh, North America, or probably somewhere in Europe, the point is, if a child in whatever country, whatever region, is experiencing what the, the CDC identify as adverse childhood experiences, what this particular research is saying is that it can affect the child in a negative way. So this research, it looked at, eventually it was over 253,000 participants in these 37 um, studies that were eventually used. And what the researchers identified was that once a person is exposed to four or more adverse childhood experiences, so we're talking about the child um, maltreatment or the exposure to, exposure to domestic violence, and we know that in a number of cases, and this research highlights it too, in a number of cases, you don't just have one particular adverse childhood event. You can have several. And in a number of cases, the child is exposed to several. So when this happens, the research looked at four or more adverse childhood experiences. Uh, the researchers concluded that it can affect the overall growth and functioning of the individual. Of course, there are some functioning that are adversely affected uh, when compared to others. So for example, in the conclusion of this particular research, the researchers noted that violence, mental illness, and substance abuse seem to be higher among a population who experience adverse childhood experiences who who were involved in adverse childhood experiences. And this particular research highlights something that we really have to pay close attention to. A number of times, what we try to do as psychologists, as counselors, mental health workers, social workers, we try to help persons when they're experiencing um, these adverse childhood um, situations. So we offer therapy, we offer counseling, we offer assessments. But what is important is if we can create programs even before 
So it's not just waiting until a child comes to us, but we creating programs to prevent even these things from happening. So parenting programs, uh, meeting children early in the school system, for example, and, and uh, giving them strategies to cope should they experience any kind of traumatizing or stressful events will be more advantageous than trying to treat with the particular child when they are already experiencing these. Of course, in a number of instances, that is what happens. We work with the person um, after they may have experienced an adverse childhood situation. But it's really good if we can pay close attention to looking at policies or programs that can even have psychoeducations that can help an individual so that they don't perpetuate one, um, the cycle, but two, they short circuit or they treat with whatever challenge may come their way. So it's really important that we pay close attention to how adverse childhood experiences can affect the population, can affect children, because mental health, perpetuation of violence, and substance use or abuse can really have a drain on the economy. It can have a drain on the um, education system. It can have a drain on um, persons actually qualifying to eventually contribute in a positive way to their society. So let's pay close attention to how we treat with the matter of adverse childhood experiences. So if you find this content useful, please like and share with someone else. Until then, take care.